Okay, so let's learn some basic information about the Brunton pocket transits. And I have three here, and they're all a little bit different, but they all have the same basic features. So, one thing I want you to note is how it's placed in its holder. You can see that the bottom of it, in fact, is facing out. And that's because the top has a mirror in it. And we want to protect that mirror when we put it in the case. So we put it in like this, so when you snap it closed, you're not putting pressure directly on that mirror, which can lead to it breaking. So, here's one button. This is with plastic housing. There's this one, which is a very old version but are still commonly used because they're so rugged. They last a very long time. So that has an aluminum case. And then this one has an aluminum case as well, but it's a much more modern one. And in fact, this is an international version, which means that when you're close to the poles, the needle can still properly swing around even though the magnetic lines of force are at a steep angle. Okay, so two of them are quadrants, which are these two, and one of them is an azimuth, that is 0 to 360, and that's this one here. Okay, so let's just focus in on this one because they have all the same parts, right? The mirrors, the sighting arm, or the bear stabber as I call it. They have a dampener, which stops the needle. So you can see this one is swinging around a little bit and I can get it to stop moving by hitting that. They have this screw here, which is going to be used for setting the declination. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then on the back, they have this arm here, which moves the inclinometer on the inside. All right, let's put these two aside. And now just work with this button here. So just going back to the inclinometer, you can see I'm swinging, moving this arm here, and that's moving the two levels and that little arm on the inside there. Okay. So, so the button can do a couple things for us. It can measure orientation with respect to magnetic north which we can then correct back to geographic north. And then it can also measure the orientation from horizontal. So let's start with using the magnetic needle here. And you can see north on one side, south on the other, right? As we're set up here, magnetic north is to the right. And so no matter how I turn this, that needle still points to the north. Nothing surprising about that. When you measure compass direction, you're gonna want, and this tabletop's flat enough that it's close enough, but you can see there's the bullseye level. To make sure that the needle isn't bound up like it is now, see how I've angled it, and now it doesn't swing around. The bullseye level makes sure that the plane of the Brunton is horizontal enough that the magnetic needle can freely swing and always point to magnetic north. And I mentioned the dampener, right? That locks it. Sometimes people like to hit that to lock in the measurement and then take a look 
and read it off. I don't like doing that because sometimes when you push the dampener down, it actually moves the arm by a few degrees. It is possible for the arm to get caught up on the glass. And so even though the button is horizontal, this may not be free swinging. And so before I take any measurement, I just do a little tap like that, just to see that it is in fact free swinging before I read off the measurement. Okay, so what does that magnetic north needle point to? It points to the direction that the sighting arm is pointing towards. And I call it the bear stabber because we want to make sure that if we're reading north, it's this direction. And so when we hold the button, we want to hold this with the sighting arm or the bear stabber away from us, right? You could do it like this, but you're going to get 180 degrees wrong from what you expect, right? The north needle always points towards magnetic north. However, we want to measure everything relative to geographic north. So, how do we ensure that? Okay, so I've arranged the table now, so north is pretty much directly up in this view here. And what I wanted to highlight is, we know that the needle is always going to point to magnetic north. But the problem is that magnetic north and geographic north are not aligned. And we want our compass orientations always to be relative to geographic north. So this little sketch here shows the misalignment between magnetic north and geographic north. So remember, geographic north is based on the rotation axis of the Earth, and the lines of longitude all converge at geographic north. But here's the approximate location of magnetic north, which is near Ellesmere Island in northernmost Canada. Now for Colorado, there's about an eight degree difference between magnetic north and geographic north. And so if we don't have any correction on our button and we take a measurement, it's going to be, the orientation is going to be relative to magnetic north. So if we want our sighting arm to point to geographic north with our little indicator needle at exactly north, zero degrees on that ring, it means that our sighting arm is going to point to magnetic north or near Ellesmere Island in northernmost Canada. So to correct for this discrepancy between the two and this shown here as an angle, we need to then get our um, screwdriver and put it in the little screw on the side which then rotates that inner ring. And because magnetic north is to the right of geographic north for Colorado by 8 degrees, we call that an 8 degree east declination. And so that's what we set it here. Now remember, east is over here on the left side, which gets explained in this video as well. And then right there is about 8 degrees east. So the indicator pin is now pointing to 8 degree east which means what? If we put the north arrow to zero on that ring, it means that the sighting arm then points to geographic north, and that's what we want. So we can see that here, just looking at our little image. The magnetic needle is pointed towards zero degrees on this ring, which means this is gonna to point to geographic north, but the magnetic needle is pointing to magnetic north, which is to the right of it. And so you can see that's to the right of this. Of course, declination or the correction between geographic north and magnetic north is gonna vary depending on your location on the Earth's surface. This map is available on Wikipedia, but it was originally produced by NOAA. Green lines indicate zero declination or zero correction needed between magnetic north and geographic north. 
red lines indicate an eastern correction and blue lines indicate a western correction. Okay, so anytime you begin to do field work, you need to make sure your declination is correctly set for your Brunton. Other things you want to be aware of is anytime you take a compass direction, make sure that there's no magnetic either jewelry or watches on you, that your pencil may not be magnetic, or your clipboard, etc., etc., etc. So I usually do wear my watch, although I do know that it does have a very slight magnetic field associated with it. I don't know if you can see, but I am getting that needle just to move around. But I have carefully studied that if the Brunton never gets any closer to my watch than a hand distance, then it doesn't affect it. But this is also why I really like these cheap mechanical pencils because they're all plastic. Oh, there is a little bit of metal in there. But you can see it doesn't do too much. So as long as we're not putting our mechanical pencil immediately next to the Brunton, we'll sh we should be okay. So you see anywhere around here, it has no effect. You guys will probably want to use this, a clipboard, to take strike and dips off of. But you can see, not a good idea because you're going to get influence from this big metal part. Hence why, as will be demonstrated, the field notebook is going to be something that we take strike and dips on because it's all paper, string, and glue, none of which are magnetic. Okay, let's now address why east and west are flipped on the Brunton from what we expect to see in the compass wheel, north, south, and then east to the right, and west to the left. Well, let's take a look at a traditional compass, and we see that this is set up the same way. North, east, south, and west. When we take measurements with the Brunton, they're going to be done with um, either the sighting arm or the edge of the compass here or here when we start taking measurements, in, which will be covered in another video. If I want to know the orientation that the sighting arm is pointing, right, and let's say I want this to be pointed towards the northeast, if I rotate the button this way, we can see that the north arrow is now pointing to the northeast in terms of reading off north and east on the dial inside. So this is now pointing to the northeast. That doesn't work if we look at the regular compass. So north is pointed to north. I want now this to point to the northeast. Okay, so let's ignore the compass needle. If I want that to point to the northeast, now it's pointing to the northeast. And now look where the compass needle here is pointing. It's not pointing to the northeast, it's pointing to the northwest. So, this is why Brunton's do not have its compass wheel as north, east, south, west going clockwise. It has it as north, west, south, east, with east and west flipped. So, wherever you point the sighting arm or the bear stabber, it's pointing you can then just read off the north arrow and that's telling you the direction of this. Okay, now I'll show you some compass directions on a quadrant compass. This one's showing north 12 west. This one's showing north 46 east. This one is south 12 east. 
This one is south 45 west. And this one is south 55 east. Now let's do the same thing on an azimuth compass. So this one is due north or 000. This one is 073. This one's 145. This one is 211. And this one is 323. Okay, so we've been looking at the Brunton flat on the table. Ideally, when we take compass directions parallel to the bear stabber or sighting arm, the bullseye level is now centered. So the second way to take measurements is we have to rotate the Brunton compass like this so it's now in a vertical plane. So now I need to change my camera setup so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, so we've turned the Brunton now on its side and I've switched my setup around here. And let's take a look. We see there's these numbers on the back panel of the Brunton only on one side. And we can see there's a bar level down here. And if we rotate the lever on the back, we're rotating that stuff on the inside. Now this is a common mistake, is that you can see the numbers are on the top. You will not be able to take inclination orientation with the numbers on the top. So you always have to do it this way. And so there's two things you got to do. Make sure the numbers are on the bottom. And then you can rotate that lever until the bar level is level. And we should read pretty much zero degrees. And in fact, we do. And so we can do zero degrees. We can do 90 degrees or pretty close to it. All right, I rotated the lever, the bar level there. You can see that we're pretty much dead on 90 degrees. Whereas we're given a plane like this, we can measure its inclination as well. Of course, we know when we're doing strike and dip, this is going to be dip, right? Now notice, if I try to go this way, that isn't going to work. The numbers are on the top. So I have to flip it around this way. Grab that lever on the back with your hand until the bubble level is centered like it is right there. And 70 degrees. Let's do one more. Let's do this plane. Again, if I put it on this way, the numbers are at the top. That isn't gonna work. There, we see the numbers are now on the bottom. I rotate my level. Until the bar level is centered. And of course, there's that little bar that's in the way, but it's about 34 degrees. Okay, this isn't the full steps for doing strike and dip. Those are covered in other videos. But now you should have a good understanding of the basic mechanisms of how a Brutton works from taking compass orientation to measuring the inclination of something.